who says who says that Adam or man, the human being, according to the Bible, Adam, who says that Adam is six thousand years old? Who says and who has said that the earth is only six thousand years old? There's this false narrative, there's this lie. I, this lie of counterfeit Christianity, of the Western, whitewashed, Gentile Christianity, the Anglo-American so-called Christianity that says that the earth is only like 6,000 or so years old from a so-called, a pseudo. Here's what we call what the Bible speaks about, gnosis pseudonymo. So in translation it says science falsely, falsely so-called. In the Bible, it says there's a science that is falsely so-called. Now, many religious folks would apply this to, you know, the science of the world, the Gentile, Greco-Roman, Anglo-American, you know, the science that comes down to us today, the knowledge, the system of knowledge, the system of observation, of, of testing, of repetition, all of that, observational science. But who says that the earth is only 6,000 years old? Some people believe and have been made to believe, and there's a lot of make be lie Eve, that the earth is only 6,000 or a little over 6,000 years old. And they say, well, that's because if the Bible says the earth is 6,000 years old, how many times have you heard this, this, this pseudo, this false argument and this false reasoning going on that the earth is only 6,000 years old? Or that they say, well, man was made on the sixth day and a, a year, you know, a, 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 a year, <laughs> thousand years if the Lord, you know, is as a day is with the Lord as a thousand years. They take that part in, I think it's what the New Testament, where, where do we find that in the Bible? And they'll say, well, see that right there? That's the key to understanding Genesis chapter one, right? Where it speaks about the creation. So they'll take the verse in the Bible where it says that a day with the Lord is at 6,000, a day with the Lord is at a thousand years. A day with the Lord is at a thousand years. So basically they say, well, that's the key right there. And what most people don't recognize is this whole idea that is falsely and erroneously based on the Bible saying that the earth is only 6,000 years old is based on somebody back in the 17th century. Do you, know, do you know who basically came up with that philosophy, that pseudo-religious philosophy? And everyone seems to just believe that person, but nobody really knows. I mean, most folks don't know when they say that, oh, y'all believe, people who talk about the Bible believe the earth is only 6,000 years old. Look, this fossil was found and it's dated as being you know, 600,000 years ago or 6 million years ago. And people say, oh, look at that. That proves that the Bible is wrong because the Bible says that the earth is 6,000 years. Oh, that, that, that man was created. Man is only 6,000 years old. And look, we found a bone, a bone of someone who is a seems like a human being, you know, or related to a human being, and this is our oldest ancestor, maybe they uh, evolution from some other type of primate, and this is older than 6,000 years old, I mean, it's, 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 it's millions of years, it's hundreds of thousands of millions of years old. <laughs> And people say, man, see, that's what that religion stuff, that Bible stuff, I told you the Bible was, was bad, I told you the Bible was wrong. But what they don't ask is the question, who says? Prove it, who says? So we get a lot of religious folks, you know, and Bible-believing folks, you know, here in the 21st century, that will be trying to prove this old lie and won't even know who invented this idea. It was actually someone named Usher. Usher. We're going to just share that right there with you so you can look this up for yourself. And when I found this out a couple of decades ago, I was surprised. I'm like, this, there was this guy, in, this Irish guy, Irish archbishop, and he was curious about this. And he went around looking at rocks and looking at different formations in his country and where he was. I think he was in Ireland. He went looking at, you know, different rock formations. And he opened up his Bible and he looked over here and he looked over there. And he was an archbishop. I mean, after all, he was somebody entitled, right? And he came up with this idea and said, boom, a day 
of the Lord is as a thousand years, and therefore, when we get these six days in Genesis chapter 1, that's 6,000 years, and all these charts were made, and all of this, you know, these ideas were circulated, and people really believed it then, back in, what was it, 16, 16, 16, 1600 something, in the 1600s, in the 17th century. Let's show you this right here. First things first is our exhibits right here. Now, this one right here, right, this one right here is what's called the Irish Times, right? The Irish Times, as you can see this right here. It says, how an archbishop calculated the creation. A 17th century Irish prelate, prelate, right? Reached the heights of scientific sophistication. In the Bible it says, watch out for sophistry, right? Scientific sophistication in estimating See, pay attention to the language. In estimating Earth's age, writes Mary Mulvihill. Mulvihill. Now, this article here is dated as September 25th, 2003. 2003, right? And so this article right here, we had to actually look up the question. What was the question? Let's let's back this up for one moment. The question was Usher. Remember the name Usher. I think he spells it actually with two S's, right? Usher, right? We ask Usher, age of Earth. Many scholars agreed, agreed. That's past tense, right? Agreed with Usher that Earth was about five thousand six hundred and fifty years old. Now, when was this? Well, here we have how an archbishop calculated the creation, right? And let's click on this again, right? So right here, here's, here's a article. Now, getting into the article itself, the highlight of the article is right there. But let's scroll back right here. Let's scroll to the top of the article. Now, this article is very, very important because this blows out the water. The fact that it's not the Bible. It's not the scripture. It's not... The first book of Moshe, the first book of the Pentateuch, Bereshith. It's not Bereshith that says so, right? It's not the Hebrew, we could say the, the Torah that says so. It's not the first book of the Bible that says so. It's nowhere in the Bible that says that man is only 6,000 years old. It's nowhere in the Bible that it says that the earth is only 6,000 years old, but it's men and people. It's this 17th century Irish prelate, prelate and others that have made up their own religious ideas, especially at a time when these religious folks, you know, had a lot of great power, you know what I mean? Like they were, you know, they were like the corporation, they were like the media, so forth and so on. So when they said these things, they were likely to be believed, right? And because they were believed, this belief, right, this make-believe, right, winds up coming down to us nowadays and people never even recognize the origin of the make-believe right and yet when we look at the bible and study the scripture we don't see anywhere in the scripture where it says this yes it speaks about six days of creation but there's some very interesting details they say pay attention to the details some people say that the devil's in the detail we say that the divinity right you know the truth is actually in the details of the book Right. We can get into that right there, but first let's just go over this right here because it's important to recognize that it was an archbishop in the 17th century, the 1600s, that actually came up with this 6,000 year old idea of the earth. And there's many ones that have been seeking to, you know, prove this archbishop's um, estimation, his guess, his guesstimation. And also there have been those who are seeking to disprove what the archbishop Usher said, and also seek to disprove the Bible. So they basically are co-signing that what Usher said is what the Bible says, but it's Usher that said this is what he believed, what he was estimating on, guesstimating in the 17th century. So here it goes right here. It says in 1650, the Archbishop of Armagh, right, James Usher, began counting all the, quote, begats, you know, this one begat, that one, that one be in the Old Testament. He also studied ancient Egyptian and Hebrew texts. Really? Really now? Hmm. It'd be good. Can we look over any of his research? Any of his research papers are available? This definitely is something that we need to look into very much more 
because when people come up to you or me or I and I and I and say, well, how, uh, do you believe that man is 6,000 years old or, or the Bible says man is 6,000 years old? So tell them, no, it's not the Bible that says that. It's people that say that about the Bible. People say a lot of things about a lot of things. People say a lot of things about ancient Egypt, uh, you know, about Hebrew scripture. And then they find actually evidence or then they study the actual text for themselves and this is actually someone's opinion, someone's belief, and they made other people believe it. And as we go on this make belief, we'll never find the truth because we're just making ourselves believe or we've been made to believe lies. But let's just go into Usher's story right here. James Usher, 1650. So in 1650, so this means that how long was the Bible approximately around? It was at least around for 1650 years before Usher, right? If not also couple of thousand years before that at least the oldest forms manuscripts fragments of the scripture that we call the old testament was around way before that we're talking about genesis how long was genesis around some of the oldest manuscripts of genesis you know at least within the you could say thousand bc you know has been found here and there so let's just say that the scriptures the bible's around for at least you know 2500 to 3000 years at least before james usher right this archbishop of armagh right came up with his theory circa 1650 isn't that interesting right do the jews or the hebrews do the israelites believe this did the Jews believe this? The Israelites believe this before? You have to remember that we're now talking about, is this, um, well, this is before the rise of, we could say, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. I don't know, what, what was, was he a Protestant bishop? Not getting into those particular details. Was he a Protestant bishop? He might have been a Catholic bishop, right? But either way, right, he was a Western Gentile Christian, right? That means that the, the, the Christians came into this, you know, way after the Jews and this basically is the Jews or the Israelites the Hebrews book right this is the Israelite book you know the the Torah right the first book of the Torah right Genesis what did they believe did they also believe this 6,000 year something right is that what was being now don't even try to play that game people say well what's the Jewish calendar Jewish calendar is like 5,000 something so therefore they believe such and such but no is that what the Bible says? Or is that what people counting all the begats? And this is what James Usher did. He counted, he began by counting all the begats in the Old Testament. He also studied, according to this article here, ancient Egyptian and Hebrew texts, analyzing how the ancient calendars were calculated and came up with a date for the creation. Right? The world, he concluded, did, did, did James Usher have any peer review? Mm. Was there any peer review of what he did? Oh, he was just able to, I guess, he was an archbishop after all, right? Okay. The world, he concluded, had begun one weekend. Oh, on the weekend, okay, in 4004 BC. Now, here's where this particular date that we even have in many of the Bibles, you'll find in many of the Bibles, they'll say something like 4004 BC, as though that's when creation, you know, was. Right? And all this is based on the Archbishop of Armagh, James Usher's, his, his research, his estimation, his investigation, his conclusion. Specifically, he says, on the evening before October 23rd. All right, well, let's go on. All right? Now, are we dismissing everything that James Usher said? No, we're not dismissing it. In fact, it's a very interesting theory. Right? But there's a fault in that particular theory. Right? Because we calculate time. How do we calculate time today? How's time calculated? By the motions of the heavens, or some people say the earth. Now, we're not getting into whether, you know, flat earth or ball earth or so forth and so on, because who of y'all have seen the fullness of the earth with their own eyes, right? We know that Enoch was taken up to a point where he could see the whole face of the earth, but time is calculated by the motion of the heavens basically by the stars sun moon and stars according to the scriptures and according to also modern calculations right by the movements or the rotation right of the heavens we say by the rotation of the heavens the sun moon and stars is how time is calculated correct but what's interesting in the bible is not until the um is it the fourth day 
It's not until the fourth day that according to the Bible, the sun, the moon, and the stars became visible. So that means that even if we were to say a thousand years for a day, we can only use that particular estimation using the Bible for the fourth day, right? Or a part of the fourth day, or just say the fourth day, fifth and sixth days. Only the fourth, fifth, and sixth days can utilize that particular formula that many people say is a way of counting, you know, the day, days of creation, where they say um, a year, right? Uh, a, 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 a day with the Lord is as a thousand years. I keep saying a, a year, but a day with the Lord. Let's get that one right here, just for a moment right here. So we have all of the, the key points. So ones can understand what is the crux of this particular argument, right? For themselves. So let's go right here, a day, right? Let's put Lord right here and let's put thousand, right? Let's put thousand, right? Let's put thousand there. And let's search this right here. And let's go down right here, the thousand. We can actually go all the way to, right? We can go all the way to the New Testament, but let's scan over, right? There we go, Second Peter. So it's in Second Peter. Second Peter approximately was written sometime within, we'll say between 30, 30 something, you know, AD and roughly 70, push it to 80 AD, right? But more, most likely roughly around 30 something AD. Right, so that's roughly just say two thousand years ago. Right, so Peter, right in Second Peter chapter three verse eight, it says, "But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and and don't forget the conjunction and plus and a thousand years as one day." Now it's based on this particular, you could say word here that Usher and many others make believe, assume that they can count the six days of creation to equal 6,000 years. And this is where the fault in that particular theory is found. Even if this is true here, right, it can only be true with day four, day five, and day six. Now, how do we know this? Well, you got this verse here, Second Peter 3 and 8, Second Peter 3 and 8. Let's go to sun, let's go to moon, and let's go to stars. And the question here is, how do we account time? How is time accounted, right? Right, sun, moon, and stars. In fact, in that verse, it doesn't even say sun, right? It says, here we go, right here. It's Genesis 1 and 16. And Elohim made two great lights, right? He made two great lights key word it doesn't say created but it says made i want you to note that there it says made right it's the hebrew word asa asa right the h6213 right he made two great lights the greater light to rule the day now this is taken to be the sun right and the lesser light to rule the night then it says he made stars also let's go into this right here in verse 16, it says, And Elohim set them, set them. Now, the next key operative word first is Asa, made, right? And then we have Natan. Natan means to give. And he gave them or set them in the firmament of the heaven, of the heavens, right? To give light upon the earth. Verse 18, And to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness, right? And Elohim saw that it was good. Now, notice this right here, right? So it says, and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. So what we have here is on the fourth day, right? According to the first book of the Torah, the first book of the Bible, Genesis, Bereshit, we have Elohim, right? The creator, the powers, the creator, HaKadosh Baruch Baruch Hashem, right? Making two great lights, right? Two great lights. Let's scroll down, let's scroll right here, right? Let's scroll to verse 14, right? To get this in the full context. And Elohim said, let there be, let there become lights in the firmament of the heavens, right? The Shemaim. To do what? To divide the day from the night and let them be for what? Signs, right? Signs. So we have these two great lights, right? The lights. Well, actually says lights here. That means there's the sun, right? There's the moon, 
right? The sun has its own light, the moon has its own light, the stars have their own light. So he said, let there be light collectively, right? In the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. And let them be, here's the key, right? In Genesis 1:14, and let them be, right? The lights, lights of the sun, lights of the moon, lights of the stars, let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. It seems like let these lights be for the calculation of time, times and seasons. It's very clear, according to the first book of the Bible, right, that Elohim and saying, let there be these lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, that these lights, right, are to be means of calculating times and seasons. And we know that Time is calculated on this earth, on this earthly plane. Time is calculated by the rotation, the movement of the heavens, the movement of these lights. Whether it be the sun, the moon, or the stars to say the constellations. You know, different constellations in different seasons, different lights in the heavens. This is how we know the times are changing and different times. Correct? Are we correct with that right there? According to, in the context, whether you want to believe this or not believe this or think of it religiously or not religiously, just in a reading comprehension, just, just, just sorting this. We're sorting this. See, you can just sort this out right here. All right? So when did this happen? According to the first book of the Bible, according to Bereshith, Genesis, this happened on the, which day? The fourth day. Wow. This is the fourth day here. So if we are to say that a day with the Lord, right, with Adonai, Adonai, right, with Jah, Jehovah, day with Jehovah is as a thousand years. Yahweh is with a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. And then one will say, well, you see, we have Genesis, the first day, second day, third day. We cannot calculate time as we do in the usual way. So that means that if we were to say a thousand years for a day and we calculate time based on the lights and the movement, you know, of lights in the heavens, you know, this is how we calculate time from our perspective on, the, on this earth, right? We can only say that what day, day four, day five, day six, day seven, only those four days can we even venture to apply the thousand year for a day rule the thousand year for a day rule according to the science the knowledge that we have in the scripture can only be applied from the fourth day right to we could say well not the seventh day because seventh day he completed his work according to the scripture so the sixth day in the sixth day everything was told my old right it was told my old was very good right so we can only say three thousand years so this, this now makes the question of, well, what about the first day, the second day, and the third day, right? We can even question part of the fourth day since it was on the fourth day that Elohim said, let these, you know, lights, you know, let there be these lights, you know, for the times and the seasons, right? So that means that the first three days, at least, the first three days do not conform with the thousand years for a day rule, right? If anything, those first three days are thousands of years because the lights in the heavens, according to the scripture, according to the first book, were not visible. So this blows out the whole 6,000 years. This is one thing that Usher did not calculate and many other ones who went over the Usher formula did not calculate, right? That means they were reading the Bible, right? They were referring to the Bible, but they were not studying the Bible and they were not being diligent in their study. Because being diligent in their study, you have to ask those questions. You have to ask, well, if we're talking about time, how do we count time? Right? Like when you talk about carbon dating, okay, they carbon date things. All right, that's good. You can carbon date things. But then when they say, well, this is a thousand, this is a hundred thousand years ago, how do we rate a, a, a year? How would a year be rated thousand years ago? You know, I mean, how do we rate time? That's, that's a fair question, isn't it? It's a fair question. How do we rate the passage of an hour? How would people in the past have rated it? 
how do they know that that one day it, okay this is this is a, a, the next day because the lights in the heavens the, the sun or the moon or the stars but according to the bible the sun the moon and the stars only became visible only were a, you know let there be lights you know in the firmament of the heavens on the fourth on the fourth day right so thousand years a day a day thousand years so fourth day fifth day when was creation completed according to the scripture on the sixth day that's only three thousand years that means that the three days before the fourth day cannot be counted as a thousand years because the 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 dials you know the dial like a, a dial on the clock you know you know the, when you look at the clock you can only tell well you know time because the position of the small hand the long hand and then the minute hand you know what i'm saying if there was no long hand short hand no minute hand <laughs> you know what i mean on the clock right much less no numbers you know, even if there were numbers on the clock, but there's no shorthand, longhand, there's no minute hand. How are you going to be able to tell what time it is? Then, at the fourth day, right, the longhand, the shorthand, the minute hand appear. Now we can calculate from when? From the fourth day. But that means that the three days before, how long were they? There's no possible way according to the same science of the scripture the thousand years a day the day a thousand years there's no way to calculate that so therefore possibly right we do have thousands of years right maybe even millions of years you know because thousands add up you know what i'm saying like megabytes you know megabytes add up to you know kilobytes add up to megabytes megabytes add up to gigabytes gigabytes add up to terabytes and so forth and so on you know what i mean so when science says they found something and if the carbon dating and everything else is fairly accurate and it estimates something like thousands or hundreds of thousands of years this does not contradict the scripture or the Bible, the Hebrew scripture or the Bible does not contradict it. It contradicts certain religious and certain beliefs of certain religious folks and other academic scholars that might, you know, want to, you know, how can I say, bring their religious belief. When I say their religious belief, their theological belief, you know, because it's convenient. 6,000 years a day with the Lord, 1,000 years. How many days was the creation? Six days. And they never ask, well, how do, how do we calculate time? See, they always assume, you know, we know how we calculate time, you know. Today is not yesterday because of the rotation of the lights in the heaven, right? And this is another day, you know what I mean? That's how we calculate. But if there was no sun no moon no stars okay so here it says right here so this is what usher concluded these days most people laugh at the irish clergyman's work yet in 1650 it was the height of scientific sophistication so to people today laugh like you might be laughing at what we're saying right here that yes the day a thousand years thousand years a day if we apply it, it can only be applied to roughly 3,000 years, right? And are we saying that the earth is 3,000 3, years old? No. What we're saying is that that can only be applied to day four, day five, and day six of Genesis. Day one, day two, day three can be hundreds of thousands of years can be millions of years why because the time telling devices according to the scripture and according to the reality outside the scripture is not there what's the time telling device the short hand the long hand the second hand like on the clock you know the minute hand the hour hand you know and the second hand on the clock they appear on the genesis clock at the fourth day not before the fourth day all right now people will laugh this off but watch 
as ones and ones begin to recognize the truth of it, it's going to come up into their theories. You're going to hear more ones speaking about this. So far, we've been looking around at people who try to justify, well, the 6,000 years based on the Bible. Many of them don't even point to Usher. You know, they take this as this is what the Bible is really saying. And what it is is an interpolation, you know, or interpolation into the Bible to try to explain it. Now, interpretation generally are not bad, you know, just because of interpretation. In fact, most people are reading the Bible as based on interpretation. Somebody had to sit down and look at the original languages and make decisions on what words or how these words were going to be interpreted. And then you have people arguing over the interpretation and really getting to, well, what was the interpreters working with? So we can just look over their work. Like we're asking to look over the Irish clergyman's work right here and looking over his work. So in his day, right, it was the height of scientific sophistication. And many other erudite scholars were computing similar sums. So there were other people who call themselves scientists, and many of these people are part of the, quote, scientific, you know, history or bibliography, right? Even though they were religious people, they were influenced, you know? So don't think that all the people who believe more or less something from the Bible were not, quote, scientists in their own ways. But the formulas, the theories that they were working with, some things might have been true and good and some things we learned were not true and good. Just, just putting this into perspective, right? There was even heated academic debate about whether time would have begun on Saturday evening or the Sunday morning. Now, modern geologists can use complex dating techniques to assess the age of a piece of rock but transport them back to 1650 and they'd find that the only way to calculate an age for Earth was to follow Usher's technique. And this is what many ones have done. Even to this very day, unconsciously, they follow Usher's technique, especially the religious folks that get locked into this 6,000 year, 6,000 year Earth, you know, young Earth or whatever, you know, 6,000 year Earth or Adam was created 6,000 years ago and they'll say, well, this is what your Bible says. The Bible says it's no. An interpretation, a popular, right, and a much believed interpretation of the Bible has said that. And because nobody questioned where they got it from, they continue, right, to espouse that uh, philosophy, right? Quote, God's truth, right? They call this, this is God's truth. No, this is Usher's God's truth. <laughs> it's Usher's, right? As an accurate historical record, not. It's not an accurate historical record, right? Now, there's more into this article, not to go through this whole article right here, right? But there's more into this article about how different ones were seeking to, you know, calculate, well, when was creation? Some people would say, wow, these people had a lot of free time on their hands, right? Because when you could, you, we could ask the question, does it matter whether the earth was, was 100,000 years old? or whether it was a uh, hundred million, you know, a hundred million, you know, <laughs> years old. Does it really kind of matter in that sense? It's like whether the earth is a ball or whether it's a flat plane. Now, that probably matters a little bit more because that's like this right here. We've been made to believe something that we cannot even verify. But that's a whole other matter because no one's want to get on that. There's a whole bunch of back and forth. And we don't have conventional views, right, about it. We think that there's some true things on both so-called sides of it, right, both sides of the argument as far as that go right there. We don't think that the earth is flat, flat, right, but it's definitely an earthly plane and it's the heavens, what we maintain is the heavens, right, that turn around this earthly plane. But that's a whole other point. Some people want to now, they hear me say that, they might disagree with that or they might agree with that. The point here is that the Bible itself does not say that the earth is 6,000 years old, nor does it say that man is only 6,000 years old, right? That is not possible to calculate. In fact, when Peter said what he's saying, did Peter say what he's saying as a key to dating the age of the earth? Or does that have another meaning? Remember, Peter, in the scripture, Kepha, Peter was a Yehudi. He was a Jew. And Hebrews and Jews and Israelites have other ways of looking at the Bible that 
in some cases and in many cases differ from what the later so-called Christians, especially European Western Gentile Christians believe, even though they have reviewed a lot of Jewish and Judaic writings. So Peter is speaking in the context of being like a messianic Yehudi, right? being a, a messianic Jew in that sense. He is speaking still, he is speaking not in a latter-day Christian sense, I just want to just emphasize that some may understand that, but not to give, be long-winded on that. Now, it says, thanks to radioactive techniques, we know Earth is 4.6 billion years old, an age that leaves plenty of time for the relentless processes of geologies and evolution to take place. So would, according to the Ras Iodonis, we could say, if you want to put us out as, as a theory, the Yadin, you know, according to Yadon, right, so would those three days before the fourth day, according to Genesis 1, right? If the 4.6 billion years old is true, is a true day, that could all fit within the first, second, and third days, seeing that the sun, the moon, the stars, the lights that are used for the calculation of times and season were not visible until the fourth day, right? So... This proves that the Bible, right, is true and matches and can be used, right, to verify the best of science. But that some have superimposed their ideas and kind of tried to lock the Bible in to their assumptions. And unfortunately, you know, this is what Usher did, right? Though it was an interesting theory and it seemed very you know, it seemed to fit like a glove, like they would say. What would James Usher have made of such a time scale? Usher, who was born in Dublin in 1581, so some man born in 1581, gave a whole different perspective than what was before that. In other words, those who read Genesis, my right, thousands of years or heard of Genesis, what Genesis chapter 1 says, do you think they would agree with Usher? Obviously what Usher concluded was not what was believed, known, or advocated before that. This is what is clear. Usher basically introduces an idea that other Western Gentile Christians, you know, the Western European Christians, Anglo-American Christians, picked up on and continued. Right? So he was born in 1581, was from a merchant family whose name survives in the city's Usher Island. He was the first, what, one of the first students to attend Trinity College in Dublin starting at the age of 13 and his book collection later formed the nucleus of the college library. He was a renowned scholar and a professor of theology at Trinity and a keen astronomer who used a telescope to verify for himself the theories of Galileo, Kepler, and Copernicus. So that means he believed in these other theories, that these latter-day theories that was coming up. He was in England in 1642 when civil war broke out and remained there, managing to be a royalist. He attended Charles I at the scaffold and a friend to Oliver Cromwell. Interesting, this is interesting. This is a whole other area. Those who know we have gone into Oliver Cromwell and some of the British history as well, right? You know, regarding the war between the white Anglo-Saxon Protestants and the black Anglo-Saxon Protestants. But that's a whole other point, but it's interesting to see, you know, whose side it seems like he was on. When Usher died in 1656, he was buried at Cromwell's request in Westminster Cathedral. So, just to get a little more insight on who Usher was. Now, the next question is, why or how come, why, how come Usher's, um, his, his theory has held on so long even without his name being attached. So they've detached his name from this theory and they still continue to preach this theory, especially a lot of Christians. A lot of Christians just hold to this 6,000 year thing, right? In spite of, you know, or they, they say, well, the Bible might be wrong there, but they, they hold to the moralistic things while not even recognizing that the Bible does not say that. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, like a, it's like a magic that's being played on people. They read the Bible 
and they don't even pick up on weight. The fourth day is when the lights in the heavens, sun, moon, and stars became visible, right? That means that the way we calculate time, time can only be calculated like that. So that means if the three days before that, this was not visible, it leaves definitely a very strong possibility right, for hundreds of thousands of years, millions of years, or even billions of years. You know, a couple of billions of years could be that first day. The first day, what we have in the first day could be billions of years, right? You know, because it started out with the long, you know, like, like the light, like when they study light and the red, the red infrared waves, and they try to study how long creation has been based on those bandwidth, the spectrum. So it could have started out with like the red, the long spectrum, and then got shorter as we see the seven bands, you know, of the spectrum, you know, the light going through a prism, right? And we can see those seven bands. We have what, the seven days. And then we come to that middle day. Notice it's at that middle day between the seven, like the menorah in a sense, right? Between the seven, we have the Shemesh, you know, what's known as the Shemesh. Shemesh in Hebrew means sun and on the menorah, the, the, the seven branch um, lampstand, right? The lampstand called the, falsely called the candlesticks, but the lampstand, we have that center shaft and we have three branches on one side, like the, the first three days, and then we have three branches on the other side, the next three days. Just to note that right there, and it's interesting that we can now even fit the menorah symbolically as almost like an allegory of creation. Right? And the center branch, right, which would be like that fourth, right, that fourth of the seven, like the fourth, the middle, right, is called the Shemesh. And it's on the fourth day, according to the Bible, that the lights in the firmament implying the sun, the moon, and the stars in the heavens became visible. And it says only on the fourth day to let the sun, the moon, and the stars be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. So therefore, when we say how many years, notice how many years, right, old is the earth, right? The days before the fourth day, right, the days before the fourth day, do not fit. Why? Because they are off the chart. The first three days are off the chart. So the second, second Peter, the second Peter um, quote that we shared with you, the second Peter quote. Let's just bring that up right here. The second Peter quote right here. Day second Peter. Scroll down here. Right three and eight. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing: that one day with the Lord as it's like a thousand years so this is the lord's perspective see even this verse here is speaking about perspective so a day with the lord right you know well with you this is not a problem but with me it is so i'm saying with you that means from your perspective so a day with the lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years with the lord is as one day so even if we were to assume that the thousand years for a day can be applied in any wise to creation it can only just from a scientific a research a knowledge perspective based on the knowledge we have of genesis chapter one can only be applied from the fourth day to the sixth day right and there's a further argument we can bring forward of why it cannot be applied even like that but if we were to even say well let's give them that Let's give them that, yeah, there's some seeming sensibility in that. Yeah, I, I, I get what's being said. But it's saying, with the Lord. It's saying from the Lord's perspective. What we have here in the first book of the Bible, in, 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 the, in Bereshith, right, the Aleph chapter, right, is for our perspective. So you see the difference? There's a difference, right? There's a difference of perspective, right? And so we just apply it. And we say it can only be applied, right, for half of that creation so-called week. The creation week, the thousand years and a day can only be applied for half of it, which leaves the other half off of the charts, right? So for three, for three, maybe three to four days, right? well, actually only for three days, right? We only have 
because remember everything was sealed up according to the Bible you know Yahweh Elohim he, he completed Wayakulu Wayakulu right he completed it when on the seventh day right so once again right here brothers and sisters this is on this particular you know when we're talking about well what is the age what is the age of the earth right what is the age of the earth how old is Adam and Eve you know how old is Adam and Eve and all those questions well the first thing we need to consider right when we're talking about the age of the earth we need to consider time right and when we talk about time 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 all right let's just go to some earth some earth shots right here and we'd like to get a little bit more on the science of the earthly plane right when we're talking about the earth let's see right here the earth the earth the earth all right well some of this right here you know you can see some of our perspective right here the earth I think it's going to Pangaea right the earth right so the formative part processes that science talks about right you know the, the migration of land masses and so forth and so on all of that fits perfectly right with those first three days right and therefore taking potentially thousands if not millions if not billions of years why because the means of calculating right the means of calculating right according to the Bible are off the chart so even right there the ancient peoples and Moshe who was learned in all the wisdom of Mitzrayim of the Egypts the good Soch, right no doubt was acquainted with this many of the ancients knew right that creation right took thousands hundreds of thousands if not millions or billions you know if they even conceived in that sort of a language it took an, an indefinite period of time right but then as we compare the bandwidth notice we introduce the light the light spectrum the light spectrum is very very important we introduce the menorah right and the central shemesh shemesh the shamesh the shemesh the sun and how the sun appears on the fourth day and the fourth day is the middle right of the creation week right the fourth day is the middle of the creation week so we're looking at Pangaea right here because as we pick up on where was the garden, the Gan Ba'aden, right? People try to find the Gan Ba'aden and don't recognize, right, the potential difference of the land masses. This is why they find many, you know, like buried like um, seas, you know, they have many like uh, and rivers. They see rivers that obviously in ancient times were connected, right, but are not connected today. Right, we see part of a river over here, and then we see a next river over there, and then they have groundbreaking radar, and then you see that well, there's a connection between these two potentially the, the parts of this ancient river. Right, that means that in order for these things to have happened, based on how we calculate time today, must have taken what would be the 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 the, the um. What would be similar, you know what I mean, I'm trying to find the word, what would be um, comparable in that sense, right, with what the carbon, some of the carbon dating is. Because some of the carbon dating is accurate. Some of the carbon dating is inaccurate, right? So carbon dating as a technique does work, but it does have limitations too. So we have to consider that. So it's not that we're saying, oh, the Bible, 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 and we're dismissing science because from a true perspective of the Hebrew Bible, we include science. There is a scientific approach. And even in the scripture, right, there was a scientific approach. This is why the first three days of creation are off the chart, right? The first three days of creation are off the chart. That means it's not chartable, right? That means that thousands hundreds of thousands millions even billions of years are conceivable right from the biblical perspective right from a true let me put it like that qualify it from a true biblical perspective right but from the counterfeit the pseudoscience oh before we get out of this right here let's touch on the pseudoscience let's touch on the pseudoscience right here right pseudoscience let me show you this right here all right, pseudoscience. Where are we right here? Pseudoscience. Science falsely so-called. And it's interesting that the Bible would have this written in it, right? In the translation, science. Let's look at science right here. Science, okay, science. Um, 
let me put falsely falsely right boom there we go right there science all right first timothy 6 and 20 oh timothy keep that which is committed to thy trust avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called so science falsely falsely so what we're talking about here is gnosis gnosis like gnostic gnosis what do you know and the word science comes from the latin word scientia which means to know right scientia scientia means to know that's in the latin in the greek it's gnosis in the hebrew is da'at da'at the da'at is knowledge right so the root of science is what do you know what we know from the scriptures as we get to most people believe the six thousand years don't know the bible they might have read through genesis a, a million times but they keep missing the fourth day and they keep missing the significance of the fourth day right of the shamesh right that center day right and this makes their so-called science of six thousand years false according to the bible that's why this verse here in first timothy 6 and 20 where paul right rab rabbi saul shaul or the apostle paul is speaking to his disciple his talmud timothy right and he's warning him about gnosis pseudonymous right gnosis gnosis right there gnosis knowledge you see knowledge right there knowledge right this is the we could say the coin of greek word you see right there science knowledge is science science is knowledge that's why even peter says i don't want you ignorant right so there is an application of the thousand years for a day and the day for a thousand years but we have to keep it within the knowledge right so why did peter say that there's a whole context of that chapter check it out for yourself right but here we have falsely so called and we have pseudonymous you know when people call it pseudo it's pseudo pseudonymous pseudonymous means falsely named falsely named as we say it's been falsely named and falsely claimed that the earth is only six thousand years old and that the bible says this the bible does not say this my right? misinterpreters Right? Maybe religious fanatics or people who are very limited, like Usher from back in his time. He made a theory, a philosophy. It seemed very, um, it seemed very, um, I can say, uh, very elegant, you know, in the estimation. 6,000 years, it fit. It was very easy. It seemed very, you know, it seemed logical to them, right? Because they missed over the fourth day, right? They missed over the fourth day. Because if you miss over the fourth day, we destroy that whole argument because time qualifies. We can only count time. We're talking about millions of years. We know how long a year goes nowadays. And we know how we count a year. So the means for counting those first three days, according to the Bible, right, are off the chart. So the first three days are off the chart. So what are we saying? We're saying that, yes, the earth is older than 6,000 years. Boom. All right. And this whole like Adam or man, the human being, right, or human like beings on the earth is only 6,000 years. Right. Is also a gnosis pseudonymous. Right. It is falsely. Right. It's untruly named. It's so-called. It's so-called knowledge. Anyway, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, a little bit more on this as we get into this a little bit more, right? Now, are we saying that all of their dates are accurate down to the date? No, of course not. Of course, we're not saying that all their dates are accurate down to the date. But saying that the Bible only says 6,000 years, I hope that we've been able to prove to you that this is not what the Bible says. Right, because the means of counting days and times, right, only begins on the fourth day. So that means the three days before, who knows? <laughs> right, who knows? Thus the quest, thus the research. But don't say that the Bible said so when the Bible did not say so. What the Bible does say is that there were. Is an unlimited period of time, first three days, an unlimited period of time. An unlimited period of time. 
one day, right? The first day, that first quote day, remember it's from the Lord's perspective, right? From his perspective, is it a thousand years? And when we use the term thousand, just one more point right here, when we use the term thousand, right? Thousand, often in the Hebrew, sometimes it talks about, it uses the word Adam. And Adam is just speaking about man. But it's not speaking about like one man. It's speaking about men, right? So we know that when it says Adam in some places, literally it's saying one man. But in the context of what's being said, it's saying like thousands of men, hundreds of thousands of men, millions of men, right? When it says Adam, right? You know, it says sometimes son of man. Son of man is speaking in a singular sense, right? But it's not just speaking about one particular son of man every time we have son of man. The context many times will tell us it's talking about children of humanity. It's talking about children of humanity. You know, like millions of children, millions of human beings, right? To put it within that context right there. So a little bit more, my brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers. We're going to come out of this one right here. Right. Um, yeah, this was not so much. Uh, it's a biblical show and tell. Right. This was like a biblical show and tell right here. Right. Um, there's some more, you know, some more exhibits. But um, yeah, just on the age of the earth. How old is the earth? You know, sun, moon, and stars. And we're going to touch a little bit more on the whole. Um, uh, the shape of the earth <laughs> does it really matter <laughs> you know um, but the earth is an earthly plane let there be light hopefully there's light on this subject matter who says right the earth is only 6,000 years old right who says the earth and Adam is only 6,000 years old not the Bible 